everybody. Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to Lower Long Farms for the uh, Stallion Parade Open Day of 2023. Um, not just horses here today, I'm saw a cat there before. Uh, I'm sure I backed it last week somewhere. And a couple of doggies that were there. Kathy should have told me, I would have brought mine. Um, welcome everyone. Hopefully, if you haven't got a seat now, an opportunity to grab what's available. Uh, plant yourself down. Uh, enjoy um, what's on offer. Some uh, lovely beverages available uh, for you to enjoy while you watch the, the stallions that are parading today. Uh, and also the weanlings and uh, yearlings that will be coming out. We'll have also got a lot of prizes to be given giving away today as well. So if you walk away empty handed, you're just unlucky. Ladies and gentlemen, to uh, kick off proceedings today, the uh, lady that makes it all happen uh, for Lower Long Farms, uh, I'd like to welcome to the microphone uh, the, the McIntosh uh, clan for putting it on today with uh, Kath McIntosh, daughters Heidi and Georgia. Good afternoon. And a very big welcome everyone to the Lower Longs Farm Stallion Parade. We are very excited to be showcasing our wonderful lineup of stallions. The industry is all about relationships and partnerships and we are very fortunate today to have some of our partners here. On behalf of Lower Long Farms, I would officially like to welcome John Curtin from uh, JC International. He is also the proprietor of Harness Link, which is one of the biggest or the leading form of news and advertising in harness racing worldwide. Uh, John has come from Auckland to be with us here today. Dr. Peter Huntington of Kentucky Equine Research and Barristock is here to take any questions around nutrition of your broodmare, foal or yearling. Greg Gangle and Kima Franning are here to hear fr from Harness Racing Victoria. Nick Hooper, the president of Harness Breeders Victoria, and from Better Vet, joining us for the first time, Natalie Waters. Uh, we're also very fortunate to have our stallion owners in Bill and Ann Anderson uh, from Lauriston Bloodstock. They're the owners of Poster Boy. Uh, they're with us here today. Um, unfortunately, um, Halim David, uh, who was coming down uh, from Queensland, he's uh, quite unwell, uh, so he was unable to join us. Um, he's with. Uh, he's the owner of Raging Bull, uh, and we're very excited to have on display in the, the yards as you've come in, uh, the first of the Raging Bull foals to hit the ground in Australia. Um, he will also see that little foal is sporting a, a rug, saying that he's uh, you know, able to potentially win you a $100,000 cash bonus too. So um, he's a lovely little foal and, and hopefully in, indicative of the, the rest of the foals that we'll receive from Raging Bull uh, in Australia this year. Um, we'll also uh, have Mark Hughes uh, from Woodlands. Um, he's here to represent uh, the world champion in American Ideal and also um, the very uh, up and coming new kid, on, new kid on the block, which is uh, Lather Up, who is impressing with his first crop in the US. So thanks, thanks to have all those people for joining us. Um. Mark Barton from Nutrient Equine is an apology today. Um, however, the partnership with Nutrient Equine is one that we've been very proud uh, to foster since their very first sales. We're extremely pleased uh, to have had two horses from our draft of 12 yearlings in the first Nutrient sales win each of the pacing finals in 2022. Furthermore, both of these horses were bred by Bill and Anne of uh, Lauriston Bloodstock. Then in 2023, the winners of the two-year-old and three-year-old Colts and Geldings um, uh, pacing finals for the Nutrient Classic also come from the Low Long Draft. Uh, you will see a full brother to the two-year-old, uh, the Big Boss, uh, here today in the Wheeling presentation. Uh, going forward for the 2024 sales, uh, we also have siblings to Hurricane Harley, Valtino, Just Hope and much, much more. We are super proud to have entrusted into our care all the broodmares, stallions and young stock. A bit of mention is the co continued quality production of Lauriston Bloodstock. Bill and Ann Anderson were once again the 2022 Victorian Breeders of the Year. Their figures were extremely impressive with 34 starters, 75 wins and just over 55,000 in average earnings per starter. So congratulations to Bill and Ann on such a wonderful result and to all those breeders out there, good luck and keep striving for the next champion. I would also like to mention our new partnership with Country Lane Standard, Standard Breads from Indiana. Uh, through the addition of, of the breeding um, 
sorry, a new partnership through the addition of our breed changing sire in King of the North, which you'll soon see um, out here paraded and you won't help but be impressed by him. In your show bags, you will find information on the stallions, freebies and other give giveaways and also information on our Low Long Farm stallion bonus. This is the second year that we have won this $100,000 cash bonus. Um, it is worth up to $400,000 in total, but this bonus is paid out to the owner of the foal that is bred to a mating of Poster Boy, Yankee Rockstar, Raging Bull and Soho Trebekah from our pacing stallions and from our trotters for Pastor Stephen. If the progeny of one of these stallions comes out and wins the 2027 Vic Bread final, then you will be, you will be paid a $100,000 cash bonus from us. This will also act to incentivise the sale of the owner of the yearling of the horse, uh, uh, owner of the horse at the sales. Um, we'll be heavily promoting these offspring um, for those breeders come the sale time. And as I said before, you saw that raging bull foal out in the, the yards out there, um, and he's, a, he's indicative of, of one of the foals that were bred last year as part of this bonus scheme. We wish to give back to all those breeders that support us, and we are backing our boys into match it at a group one level um, and against all those proven sires. Importantly, there are no sustaining payments required or foal nominations to be eligible. You just simply have to breed to one of those stallions. Um, of note, each of those pacing sires are also eligible for the elevated um, Vic Bread um, Pure bonus of $12,000 for their first win. So if there's nothing but, um, uh, you know, great additions to these sires. After we have paraded the stallions today, we will so showcase some of the progeny in a mini yearling parade. Some of these yearlings will go through the sales next year, so you'll get, get a bit of a sneak peek of the products that we will have on offer. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce Grant Campbell as our new bloodstock agent for 2023. A lot of you will already be familiar with Grant. Um, however, if you've not met him, uh, please take the time to introduce, him, introduce yourself to him today. So give us a wave, Grant, so everyone knows who you are. Um, Grant has been a very welcome addition to our team and is doing a fabulous job. Some housekeeping. The toilets are located at the other end of the barn. Food will be brought out around shortly and will continually come out over the course of the day. Beer, wine and soft drink can be found with Joel Fowler and tea and coffee under the end of the barn. There are bins spread around so please utilise these. As you have come in today, you will also have been given a raffle ticket. Please keep this in handy as we will be drawing the winners of the lucky door prizes between the Stallion and Yelling Parade and also at the conclusion of the day. There are some wonderful prizes to be won, including a free service to Lather Up and free service to Yankee Rockstar. I would also, on behalf of Luke and myself, like to take this opportunity to thank the entire team for their effort and time taken to make this day happen. Uh, Kimberley has single-handedly packaged up 150 show bags and between Kimberley, Sally and Desiree, they've organised all the, the hire, the lucky door prizes and, all the, and the general marketing. Renee and her team of Becky, Tyson and Holly have been working really hard with the weanlings in the background, getting them ready for uh, the parade today and also maintaining the stallions in the spectacular condition um, that you will see here today. And we couldn't have this day without their expertise. And Joel, Grant and Joel, yes, I do have two Joels, um, they have been instrumental in the setup and getting everything organised here in the last couple of days. I'd also like to thank Paul Campbell of Campbell's Comments um, for his continued marketing of our product, not just here today, but all year round, and the readiness to take on new, new ideas and excel in, in the production of it. We are very, very proud to present the Stallions here today uh, for our 2023 roster, and it's an ex extremely exciting chapter ahead over the next couple of years as some of these Stallions progenies start to make the racetrack. Thank you for your, all your support and your attendance today. I hope you have a lovely day and all the very best for the start season ahead. I'll now hand over to Dan and he'll be, look after you for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kath, and thank you, Heidi and uh, Georgia. And by the looks of things, they're not going to be needing me to be MC next year, are they? So uh, well trained. Um, 
Of some of the, the raffle prizes the girls were talking about, I'll just run through some of them. You might have a copy that's already in your uh, show bag, but uh, uh, you'll have the opportunity to win the, the following uh, prizes. There's a free service to Yankee Rockstar, uh, which will be at the end of the day. Uh, free yearling nomination, thanks to Nutrien. Uh, free service, thanks to Woodlands, to, to lather up. Uh, there's uh, Rand Lab Clothing, All Joints. Uh, GTS Tongala and WB Hunters at Chuka Wheelbarrow, uh, Mount Burrumboot Estate, Bottles of Shiraz, uh, Saddlewell Shepparton Halter and Lead Sets to give away, uh, Woodlands Equine Light Masks, uh, Barristock Feed Dipper, uh, Invigorate Equine Massage Voucher and Drover's Saddlery Halters. So there's a couple of them to give away. So through the course of the day in between the Stallion Parade and the uh, the Yearling and Weanling Parade, we'll, we'll announce some prizes and then also uh, at the uh, the end of the day to today. So we've got uh, nine stallions to, to have a look at. Uh, the first one up will be American Ideal and Mark Hughes is here from Woodland Stud to have a chat to us about uh, American Ideal, a stallion who's become part of, uh, well, harness racing folklore in a sense, Mark, because it's a famous name. It's a name that we all relate to. Uh, continues to produce winners and stake winners, and it must be a stallion, even though it's your core business, but you've got to be very proud of. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, this on or not? Where's Paulie? Am I on? Yep. Yep, okay. Uh, yeah, look, Dan, we're um, delighted to be back here again uh, today and for our fifth uh, season with American Ideal here at uh, Lower Long. Um, I think Kath might actually need to name that barn there, the American Ideal barn. I see it's without a name, Kath, so I think uh, going forward we need to name that barn the American Ideal barn. Woodlands will go your halves in it if you like. Um, and there he is, 21 years old, over 200 million in progeny earnings. Uh, won the two-year-old Phillies size stake division in New York today for two hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. Just keeps on keeping on. Second on the all age. We all know where he stands down here um, in the mount. Um, he's quite easily the best shuttle horse that comes to Australia every year now. So uh, we're proud of him. We're proud of the work Kath's done with us uh, for the last four seasons. Looking forward to the fifth. And as always, the West Australians are breeding to him for, um, you know, first up tomorrow morning. So, yeah. Well, I can understand why he's got the sway back over the, over the years <laughs> uh, with his stud <laughs> duties. But um, you mentioned his age. It's uh, unless uh, we're reminded of it, you wouldn't think of it. Although having said that, you've seen the name American Ideal uh, in, in breeding of top class horses uh, for a long, long time. That part makes sense, but it's still extraordinary he's going so strong and, as you mentioned, uh, providing a feature race winner this morning. Yeah, look, um, so his oldest crop are now 14. That puts things in perspective. Um, not that there's many 14-year-olds bowling around anymore by him, but that's how long he's been in the wheelhouse for a lot of breeders. Um, Four two-year-old winners in Australia this week. He's third on the two-year-old size list in Australia this year in terms of winners. He's got 15 individual two-year-old winners. Uh, Major's got 27. Sweet Lou has 25. So at that age, he's, he's still holding his own. Um, that filly that won in New York today is out of a Sun Beach somewhere, Mary. He's really good two-year-old filly that won last night at uh, Melton Renewal. She's out of a Sun Beach somewhere as, Mel, uh, as well. So, look, he's, um, you know... In the business, he is a genuine rock star. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about that. And Renee is leading American Ideal uh, around. Our thanks to, to Renee, Tyson and Becky, who will be looking after the Stallions and also the uh, the youngsters through the course of the parade today. American Ideal. Actually, there's a few of the harness breeders, uh, Victoria um, Stallion Guides, that are around the place, if you haven't already looked at them. Uh, but on page 34, all the details about American Ideal. And he stands, Mark, for 11000 his service fee, which is inclusive of GS. GST. Yeah, he's 11 grand, um, inclusive of GST plus the wonderful HRA stay in levy. Um, one thing about him, and uh, he has now had more millionaire winners than Art Major. Um, he had his 18th millionaire winner in um, North America in uh, August, a horse called Covered Bridge. Art Major's had 17, he's got 18 now, um, which is quite a phenomenal performance. You say 18 millionaires and they yep. don't have to win a million dollar race to win it. You like the little synergy and connection there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Um, anyway, uh, that race is a chat for another day, Dan. Um, for a, a, Certainly amongst stallion owners and particularly amongst Australian breeders. 
Oh, look, but he is... We, lo we loved him since the get-go. Um, still phenomenal yearling sale prices. $75,000 average in Auckland this year. Fifty four grand in Christchurch. Uh, seven, five and six times his... Um, uh, sorry, five and a half times his sale at Nutrien in, in um, April in Melbourne. Um, he is just... We actually call him the money maker because that's what he is. 75% winners to runners in Australia. So you're guaranteed pretty much getting a racetrack photo if you have one of his progeny. Um, average of $50,000 earnings on his Australian bread foals. So his nickname is ATM. He just keeps Correct. producing. Correct. Yeah. He is an ATM. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you mentioned the shuttling. Uh, tell us what goes on there, or briefly, uh, and how long you've, he has actually been uh, servicing dual hemispheres. So his oldest crop of 14. Um, so this is his 14th trip. Um, so nine to New Zealand, and now this is his fifth trip to um, Australia. So long story short, he comes out of New York. He's a blue chip farm. Uh, they van up to uh, Kentucky and then, then through Chicago. They do, they do quarantine in North America. Then the Australian stallions fly down separately to the New Zealand stallions. They're in quarantine here for two weeks. Um, so the process between seasons for them is... Um, roughly around a four to five week trip um, by the time he exits New York and arrives at Lowell Long. Well, he neighs with an Aussie accent now, so it's worked <laughs> wonders for him. Isn't it pretty special, these, these horses? We see them in the, in the catalogues all the time. You probably hear them read out when they're uh, uh, breeding uh, uh, horses that are, uh, are winning. But to see them in the flesh and what uh, this horse has been able to offer for harness racing in general, it's pretty special. Yeah, look, it is very special, and I think that's the core of our business is, is shuttle horses. Um, we understand that they are the ones that have changed, turned things around in, down here in the Southern Hemisphere, but to actually physically have him down here for us to make the commitment, for Kath to make the commitment on our behalf as well, and for breeders to want to be, you know, be in behind us with these great horses, it's, uh, it's certainly a fill-up to see him in the flesh. So uh, $11,000, including GST, is uh, his uh, service price, the mighty American ideal. I think he, he's worth a little soft applause, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, he's a pretty special unit, isn't he, American ideal. Uh, and, Mark, um, I'll have you back here shortly, and um, got to be careful the way I say this, but we'll lather up. We will indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Hughes from Woodlands. And the association with Woodlands and, and Lower Long is, uh, is a pretty special uh, setup as well. Um, thank you very much to Renee. Uh, Tyson will be leading out Mel Mara and uh, Kath will join me to have a chat about uh, Mel Mara. Um, the second of the nine stallions to be uh, paraded today. Um, I mentioned the association with Woodlands. It, it is a pretty special one, isn't it, that you've been able to develop and in a fairly short time, Kath? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's uh, a pleasure to have American Ideal here and, and also lather up. We've sort of got one in the twilight of his career and he's a you know absolute champion and the other one looks like he's going to step right into his shoes. So, um, yeah, very exciting time for us and, and terrific relationship that we have with Woodlands. Well, tell us about uh, Mel Mara here. Um, again, I'll refer to the... Uh uh, a stallion guide, uh, $2,200 service fee on page uh, 92 of the guide uh, for more information beyond uh, just listen to you now, but that information is in that guide and no doubt you've got the, the relevant uh, catalogues and brochures available for all of your stallions. Yeah, in the uh, all the show bags have all this information in there. But yeah, look, Mel Mara, he's just a, he's a bit of a favourite here on the farm. Um, he is just uh, is such a good looking horse, um, and he's just got a super personality to match. Um, he's just it's just nothing phase him. And and as you'll see, um, we've put uh, American Ideal normally lives in the yard out the back of us here, but we've. We've swapped him with Mel for this particular role. Mel will go into his paddock because Mel just isn't phased by a thing and um, and he'll just hang out in American Ideal's paddock. <laughs> Otherwise, American Ideal would have been running up and down and showing us all who the king is. So um, just for a bit of peace and quiet, we'll swap him over. But he's a stunning individual. Um, Mel has been with us for... Um, uh, this will be coming up his fifth season now. Um, and he... No, fourth season now, sorry. 
and he is it comes from the states he's a son of Liz Mara um, and he is a stallion that his pedigree is um, full of speed he's a super high speed horse himself um, and as you know the records show a lot of these stallions that are you know become breed changing along the way are the ones who have pedigrees and and race figures loaded with speed um, you know as a two-year-old he was running 25 second quarters um, you know and winning by lengths of uh, or margins of 18 18 meters so he's a and if you look back through his pedigree, a lot of those sires through there are also full of high speed. So um, we're looking forward to the first of his um, progeny hitting the track um, because I think that's where he'll prove himself um, and we'll see that over the next 12 months. OK, so what age are they at, at the moment? Uh, he has a very small crop that are, um, that are two now, just two. Um, so we'll sort of see them um, coming out over the next 12 months. And then he's got um, crops of around 30 to 40 mares coming each year after that. OK, and at a pretty attractive price, particularly in the economy that it's existing at the moment, uh, of $2,200. I sort of had to check that and put my glasses on just to make sure that is yeah. correct. Yeah, and um, look, Mel, Mel raced at, an, at a time when there were some really superstar horses racing um, that are now gone, under, gone to be stallions like himself. So there was Mick Wicked, there was Sweet Lou, um, there was... Um, uh, always be Mickey and he raced against these guys and he beat them as well so um, you know he's he was a sound long-term racehorse but he's also now got the opportunity of being a sire and, and he raced and beat all those boys that are you know are now um, doing a job themselves as a stallion so we're pretty fortunate to have him in our lineup. I reckon you're pretty fortunate to have Grant Campbell in your lineup as well and he's going to join me in just a second to talk about uh, Pastor Stephen. Um, just before um, I get Grant up, um, King of the North uh, newly acquired and we've had a good chat. I've, I've look, Since my kids have gone into a lolly shop uh, a few years back, have I not heard someone as excited as you when you were able to get King of the North here? Just very quickly tell us about uh, what transpired there and you acted very quickly to secure King of the North, but you were particularly pleased with yourself. I think you went to parts of the world that were quite foreign to you in lots of ways, but it was well worth the trip and you've got him now, King of the North. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um uh, yeah, it was a very quick trip of five days to uh, to the US and then Canada to see the horse um, and uh, and to meet the owner and and uh, yeah, it was definitely well worth the trip and and uh, also a bit of an eye opener uh, wandering around the Amish community of Indiana as well. So, um, but terrific people and terrific horse as you'll you'll find out as he comes out. Well, Grant Campbell's going to join us. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, for Grant Campbell. Thanks, Kath. So we've had a look at American Ideal and, and Melmara, and Becky will be leading out Pastor Stephen here, part of a, a very strong uh, trotting influence from, uh, from Lower Long Farms. Grant, um, pretty busy time for you. You're newly acquired by Lower Long Farms, so hopefully it's a, a really uh, happy two-way street at the moment. But uh, I know having had something to do with Lower Long and, and Kath and her team, it's a very pleasant environment and terrific bunch of people you must be working with. Yeah, it's exciting times for me, Dan, something new. <clears throat> um, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time, but um, never on this side of the fence. And um, so it's a, a bit of an eye opener for me. And um, I'm learning a lot, but it's a great team to be working with, to be learning off. Um, you know, Kath's super positive about the industry and her breeding. And um, so, yeah, to be part of that is uh, very exciting. Do you uh, quickly adopt favourites? I know this is unfair. It's a bit like having kids and someone ask you who's your favourite. You'll never say it publicly, but privately. Um, no. There are some, some uh, horses that have uh, stood out to you that you've uh, created a, a bond with quickly? Um, I haven't done enough with these boys yet to, um, to pick a favourite. Um, I've done a lot of research on them and probably the most on um, King of the North because it's his first season here. So... Um, uh, and he's very easy to pick as a favourite because uh, he's got a lot going for him and he's very, very exciting. So, um, But um, that might change um, over the next season when I get to know them a bit more. Well, tell us about uh, past uh, Stephen. Uh, we're talking about the, the, the trotting ranks here and he's uh, made a name for himself very quickly. Um, uh, and he looks absolutely magnificent, doesn't he? I mean... Uh, it looks, it'd be like Michael Voss running through you, giving you a hip and shoulder with that. Uh, he's a beautifully, immaculately strong, uh, put-together 
uh, type, isn't he? I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. Uh, no, you'd be stepping aside very quickly, that's for sure. Yeah, he's a stunning, stunning horse, son of Cantab Hall, uh, champion sire himself. And, um, you know, he's, he's already doing a very good job, this horse. He's had, uh, uh, he's had winners in Europe already. Um, he's had uh, about 260 uh, foals to the races in Europe for 187 winners. Um, he had a little bit of a funny career. He was, he was a very good racehorse, um, and then he ended up in Europe as a stallion. Um, the Americans uh, brought him back um, to the States, but that was held up for a couple of years in a court case. So he missed a couple of seasons, unfortunately. Um, uh, when he went back to America, he served a full book of mares at his first year back, so they were very keen to get him back. But, yeah, sadly, he just lost a couple of years of breeding because of that court case. Gee, that's a, that's a, well, you'd think it would be a big handicap, but it doesn't seem to have um, uh, stopped him. I mean, he's a very appealing type of horse. I mean, if you're thinking you want to get a good, tough trotter, I, I think we know where you want to get the that strong influence, those uh, um, paternal bloodlines uh, and strength from. Yeah, that's right. And obviously a lot of people know him as being a full brother to Father Patrick, um, you know, a star himself and a, and a champion sire himself. So you've got the exact same bloodlines here with this bloke. So, yeah, there's absolutely no reason why um, he won't do a fantastic job in Australia. As I said, he's already he's already got winners in one of the hardest parts of the world in Europe. So um, he, he will leave winners here. Um, he's got a very, very small um, crop of numbers from his first year, which I think was frozen semen, and then he's got uh, he's got around about 39 live foals um, that are rising yearlings. As we'll see, there's a weanling coming out, a couple of weanlings coming mm. out later today. So a couple of fillies. Um, yeah. So hopefully, you know, another uh, well, it'll be another 18 months until we see them on the racetrack. But hopefully, they'll be doing amazing things like he did. He was an amazing racehorse himself. Um, he was a little bit unlucky. He uh, he actually was the first boss past the post um, in the Peter Horton McMorial, Memorial. Um, he lost the race due to, uh, well, if you watch the replay, I think most people here would say that he was robbed. Um, he put one wrong stride in um, and then he was deemed to have caused interference, so he lost that race. And he was beaten very narrowly in the Breeders' Crown final in world record time. So, um, yeah, he was an excellent racehorse and um, there's no doubt that he'll do a great job here. And he stands for uh, $4,950, which is inclusive of GST, page 160 of the, of the Stallion Guide, as well as the brochure that would be available in everyone's uh, um, uh, bag that they've got, show bag that they've got uh, here today. But uh, yeah, he's quite a strong looking customer. There's no doubt about that. I can't see him producing weak looking horses anyway. No, that's right, Dan. He's also eligible. His progeny, again, this year will be eligible for the Lower Long Farms $100,000 bonus. So um, anyone that bred to him last year, those foals are as well. And anyone who chooses to breed from him this year, they get that opportunity as well. So if you can win a Vic Bread final in 2027, um, there's another $100,000 bonus courtesy of Lower Long Farms. Okay, thanks to the team, Becky. Um, and that's Pastor Stephen, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go on to another trotter. Actually, there's a um, King of the North we're going to talk about uh, next. Uh, you've got on loop um, King of the North and the, his relations that if you want to have a closer look, that's been on loop the whole time you're here. So it's unless uh, um, uh, it fades away because you've played it too many times, it'll be there for everyone to have a look at and uh, just get a bit more familiar with the King of the North on the TV screen, which is just at the front of the stabling area. Yeah, that's right, Dan. Um, it's been turned down a little bit now while the parade's on, but if anyone wants to have a look at that, there's uh, five of King of the North's wins. Um, there's also some wins there of Walner, his father, uh, Chapter 7, the grandfather, and Check Me Out, um, who's the mother of King of the North, and they were all world champions. Yeah, incredibly uh, well-bred, and uh, we've heard briefly from Kath before as to uh, uh, she just jumped at the opportunity and flew over to the, to the US and um, uh, was uh, tickled pink to be able to secure the horse. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's a pretty good-looking individual, isn't he? So I think you're going to be pretty impressed when uh, he's able to come out here, and he will do shortly. Yeah, no, he's a stunning horse. He's only very young, so he, you won't see as uh, quite as filled out a horse as what you've seen in Pastor Stephen and American Ideal. But um, you've got to remember that this horse is only a four-year-old. He only finished racing just over 12 months ago. Um, and uh, he's only served one book of mares already in the States. He served a full book of 130 mares already in North America. Um, so, yeah, it's very, very exciting to have him here. And and um, if we keep doing these parades for the next few years, you'll see a, a bigger and stronger horse every year. 
Yeah, no doubt at all. And how's he settled in? Because you've only been here a short time, probably a, a similar time, because he hasn't been here that long as well. So I'd only seen some video of him previously, and he was strutting his, his stuff as if he owned the place. So I suspect it's been pretty positive. Yeah, he, he's probably a little bit more chilled out. He's not, uh, you know, American ideally. He, uh, he, he's referred to as the king, and he acts like he's the king. Um, again, this horse, because he's, you know, that, not that long out of a racing preparation, um, he's a little bit more laid back. Um, I fed him last night and, and uh, I didn't feel like he wanted to kill me like some of the other boys. Look at you. Uh, he stands uh, at a fee of $7,900. Uh, that's uh, They're all inclusive of GST, the prices that are listed. Page 154 of the, uh, the Stallion uh, Guide as well. But a $7,900 fee, it sort of uh, suggests that he's something uh, pretty special. And, well, I, I know for a fact he is. Yeah, that's right. He uh, His first uh, season in America, he stood for 12,000 Americans. So... Um, you know, obviously our market is a little bit different here, but he's quite subsidised by the owners to be here at that price. So. He's, uh, he's more of that athletic uh, look, isn't he? Probably he's got that youth aspect to, to, to him uh, as well, more of an Adonis uh, type. When he sticks his head up, he, he's a pretty impressive type. And um, when, he, when he moves, he's got a very fluent action. Sometimes you don't get that opportunity when they're walking. It's a completely different action. It's like me when... I was running, I don't walk good, but I used to run fast. That is sort of true, actually. But uh, look, he is a very impressive mover, and that's obvious when you get to see some of those videos. He, he is a beautiful mover. Yeah, fear makes us all look pretty impressive sometimes, Dan. But um, yeah, no, he is, you know, and he, he's a world champion. And he, um, you know, when he won the Breeders' Crown, he set a track stakes and Canadian records. So hence why he looks like he walks pretty good, because he runs damn good. Yeah, he certainly does. So, led around by Renee, King of the North, um, has only been here for a short period of time and uh, uh, obviously he's in high demand for this season. I think the phones were ringing off the hook before he was even here, before Kath had even uh, fixed up the deal. Yeah, that's right. After the, uh, the mad dash in the plane for Kath and we could, we could eventually let people know that he was coming, the phone started ringing straight away well before he arrived here. Um, a lot of the younger breed that uh, watch a lot of the American racing and have been dying to get their hands on the, the Walner Chapter 7 bloodlines, um, they were booking him in straight away. I was ringing uh, breeders to let them know, um, but then I had other people ringing me to let me know that they already knew and they wanted a booking straight away. So. Um, yeah, no, he's got, you know, he, he's got the, the, the catch tag of being a world champion by a world champion out of a world champion, um, which you don't see that very often. Um, and it stems even further. Um, he's great, you know, chapter seven, father of Walner was a champion, a world champion himself. And um, no nonsense woman, the third dam on his page, she was a world champion herself as well. So there's just... Um, there's just impeccable bloodlines as far back as you can see. There's actually, even if you go back a little bit further, uh, No Nonsense Woman was a sister um, to a mare called Sarah's Ferg, who actually um, bred a, uh, a elite lot winner, a horse called Napolitano. So um, there's just excellence the whole way through this breed. So this is uh, King of the North we're uh, talking about, recently acquired um, by Lower Long Farms to, uh, to stand here, a book that's uh, closing quickly. Uh, I know it's not too far off being full, but I imagine there's still a few places to go, even though it had the, um, uh, the services have been snapped up really fast. So it's worth inquiring uh, pretty quickly about uh, King of the North, $7,900 uh, is his fee uh, grant. And uh, I can see him... Uh, um, being part of the, the signature stallion line up here for sure. Yeah, that's right. We're hoping that he can, uh, you know, put a great stamp on the Australian racing and breeding and, um, and uh, you know, we'll have people lining up each and every year to him. Um, his numbers are very, very strong and we do encourage anyone that uh, is interested to get a booking in very quickly because um, there will come a time when uh, his limit is, has been reached and we have to um, put the full sign up. So... Um, as he uh, walks out, Dan, really quickly, just some of the figures on uh, his sire, Walner, and Chapter 7 from the yearling sales. These are unbelievable. Um, the first season that Walner's progeny went to the yearling sales, he had 69 yearlings go through the sales. They averaged $83,000 each of 69 yearlings. In the same year, Chapter 7 had 65 yearlings go through, and they averaged 76000 
Um, it, it got better from there. The second year that Walner's progeny went through the yearling sales in, in America, he had 67 yearlings. They averaged $163,000 for 63 yearlings. Um, the top lot was a filly for $800,000. The same year, Chapter 7, 62 yearlings, $126,000 average. And then last year at the sales, Walner had 83 yearlings to go through the sales, averaged $121,000, uh, another $525,000 for a filly. The Americans, they love the fillies over there to buy, to race and breed. Um, so you quite often see the leading lots out of these boys are, are the fillies. Um, and the same year, Chapter 7, this year he had 76 yearlings go through the sales. They averaged $136,000 each. That's staggering in harness racing. I think you're talking about uh, thoroughbred yearling sales. Oh, it is amazing. And, and the trotters are so popular in um, North America and the Europeans all come to buy them as well. Um, and you quite often you'll click on the top lots and of the top 10 lots, it'll be quite an even spread between the paces and the trotters. Sometimes it might even swing in the way of the trotters. Um, there might be six or seven trotters in the top lots and only three or four paces. Yeah, incredible. Well, thanks for allowing us to learn a little bit more about uh, King of the North, uh, Grant. You can have a, uh, a short break and get something to eat or drink, uh, as anyone else can too. I won't be offended if you get up and go and get a drink, particularly a drink. Uh, but if they run out of red wine at the end of the day because of you getting up and I can't get any, that's when I might hold it against you. Um, it's time to pass the soap over, um, the microphone. Uh, to talk about Lather Up is, is Mark Hughes. I, I love the name because it just the, the prospects of uh, naming any progeny of this horse would be a lot of fun, Mark. Yeah, um, they will be for um, Australian and New Zealand breeders in uh, the next couple of years. Well, certainly next year. He'll have two-year-olds in this country and New Zealand next year. So, uh, Sudsy, as we uh, refer to him as, that's his <laughs> nickname. That wasn't a uh, hard one to, uh, to come up with. So, for him... As the Americans go to bed tonight, he will probably be the leading two-year-old sire in North America first season. Um, he's won the $100,000 two-year-old Phillies race at Scotia Downs today in Ohio, and his daughter placed third in the $300,000 final. So he has made the right start in North America on what we call B, C and D grade mares. Um, Ohio is in flush with good mares. So he has made quite the impression from the start. He was a great two-year-old himself. Um, but to make a start in that state against Seaside, Fear the Dragon, um, and to chop into what they've been doing is quite a great start for him. Seems to be leaving fillies. Um, had a filly go 51 up there, a couple of fillies go 52. He's got a very good son who went, has gone 51 as well. But he has made the right start. He's made more money than Captain Crunch on less foals already, which for us is a really is a, is a box tick. Uh, made more money this year in North America than Always Be Mickey, which is another box tick, and made more money than McWicked, which is another box tick. So we believe that we've found another sire um, that is going to make a difference. He is different. You only have to look at his father, but he's a grandson of the best sire in the world. Better's delight. I know they're, uh, they're trotting mares and they wouldn't necessarily be crossbred, but imagine uh, a, a mare with the name Gluteus Maximus or Derriere uh, <laughs> out of Lather Up. I mean, you just have so much fun with it, uh, couldn't you? Very impressive, not overly big, but he stands tall when he puts his uh, head up. He's a, gee whiz, he, he, I mean, he's faultless, really. He's quite an imposing animal, and one of the things that we do when we acquire stains is they've got to be sound when they come off the racetrack. Um, got to have a set of great legs, which he's got. He's got a faultless body. He's probably really let down for a stay in last year in his final at the end of his third third season. Um, he's probably he, he's a replica of his grandfather, better's delight. Um, probably a hand and a half taller than his grandfather. Uh, the thing we like about him, and I've had a lot, I'm not hearing any negative energy around his yearlings here in Australia or New Zealand. And one of the best judges I've found over the years has been Barry Rattray. He's a true horseman. He rang me the other day. He was genuinely excited. He's got two by him. And he said, mate, they will run. They will run. I'm hearing as well, like the Turnbull family have booked a couple into him this year. And that means he'll have horses at Bathurst in March next year. So uh, I sense we might be on the right tram with this horse. So he stands for $4,950, uh, page 82 of the Stallion Guide. 
Um, I'm expecting of his first cop. There's got to be one named Soap on a Rope. <laughs> there probably will be. Um, there's relatives in the States called Hot Shave and um, obviously his dam's Pocket Comb. So, uh, yeah, look, people are going to have a lot of fun naming their foals by him. Um, and one other thing to point out as well, the first person to book him to this season was Durham Park, Bruce Edwards. Uh, the dam of that good filly of his that won last night out of Illustrator by He's Watching. Uh, she'll be hard to beat in that Vic Bread final next weekend. She's booked into Lather Up. That was his first booking for the season. He's got two Group 1 mares in Perth and a number of Group 1 mares in uh, New Zealand. So uh, he's going to have a better start in Australia than Sweet Lewin down by the seaside ever had in terms of foal numbers. So we expect him to make ha have an impact. I think I heard Bruce say it was the first um, uh, mare that he ever bought. Mm. Uh, and she produced Renewal last night so, yep. uh, and has continually produced uh, some pretty good types. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and that's the lead I think breeders need to follow. You have a look at someone like Durham Park who are legendary breeders in our sport year in, year out. Bruce does try something a bit different, but they've been on this horse since the start. So that's uh, Lather Up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks, uh, Renee. Renee's had uh, the opportunity to bring our King of the North and also uh, to Lather Up. Uh, thank you to you, Mark. And I know, uh, as mentioned by Kath before, the association uh, with Woodlands uh, is, is tight uh, and it also seems to work really well for both sides. So congratulations with the work that you both do and with the Stallions and the prospect of uh, breeding more, uh, more superstars out of, uh, out of the, the Stallions that we've seen here today. Yeah, look, it's been a relationship, as I said, it's coming up to five seasons and it started before that, um, just to, to, to get things rolling. We've asked Kath to possibly keep a spare paddock next year, so uh, there might be someone on the way next year. We'll see how we go. Oh, hello. Hello, any cat out of the bag? I saw the cat that might have come out of the bag over the back before. That wasn't it, was it? No, that wasn't it. But, you know, it's one of those ones where, you know, hashtag stay tuned. OK, so, yeah. uh, nothing like a tease. Just like a lather up and the soap on a rope. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Mark Hughes from Woodlands. Thank you very much. Grant Campbell's coming back to uh, join me. Uh, we're going to look at, I think colonial might be the, the proper wordage to use for the next couple of stallions that we're going to come across at the moment, uh, which is great to see and good opportunity for everyone that was here last year to see these uh, stallions that are going to parade next. This is Soho uh, Tribeca. Um, and to see how he has let down because he hasn't long been off the racing scene because he was going to make a comeback it, it feels like it was last year but it certainly wouldn't have been far beyond last year that he was close to making a comeback I think he was trialing he might have even raced but he was certainly close to it so he had that uh, very physical appearance of a, of a standard bred racehorse and now it's given him the opportunity of the last 12 months to to let down and 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 be more like a, a look more like a stallion yeah that's right Dan I think it was leading in the last breeding season he was in work with the intention of possibly making a comeback but the timing was a little bit off and he was required back in the breeding barn so that didn't happen but um, as I said he's a stunning animal um, you know was, a, was a, a, an exceptional racehorse himself and um, it's interesting when you look at his breeding and you know Mark quoting a few of those millionaire sires earlier with Art Major and an American ideal having a bit of a tussle at the top for the most millionaires where you get the, the right mix here with this horse. He's by American ideal out of an art major mare. So, um, you know, if you liked what you heard Mark saying, well, here's a, a, a nice colonial option for you, a little bit cheaper than some of them boys that he mentioned too. So, um, you know, he was an exceptional racehorse. He, he, he won some very good races and ran some amazing races in defeat too. Yeah, he was. He was known for speed and strength. I mean, they're the attributes that uh, we all hope for, look for and need in some superstar. But he did have all of those attributes. And, um, you know, if that is carried down to his next generation, they're more the complete racehorses, aren't they, when they can adapt to any situation, which he seemed to. Yeah, he definitely probably showed towards the end of his career that he'd, he'd developed more speed. Um, when Mick Stanley had him for probably only eight starts, I think it was, um, he seemed to go to another level. His run in the, in the Miracle Mile in defeat was unbelievable um, for a horse to sit outside them in that uh, Southern Hemisphere record time and only just be beaten like he was, was a phenomenal run. Um, he's, got, uh, he's got yearlings on the ground as we speak that will be lining up to start racing next year. Um, we've been fortunate enough to get out and see a few of them. Paul and I filmed uh, one at Mick Stanley's a few weeks ago. Um, he's very, very happy with it, very keen on it. He's got a few others that he really, really likes. Um, and I actually had the pleasure yesterday of uh, 
working one here at Kyabram that Mick Blackmore's got in work that is the syndicate horse that I think Sport 927 has a share in as well um, and bowled her around and she's a lovely filly. I really, really liked uh, the way she felt yesterday. So um, we're very uh, excited about her and um, she'll have a another week or two in work at Mix and then go back to the paddock. But um, yeah, I can say firsthand the progeny that I've seen and driven, um, I really, really like. That's the one minute to dream uh, filly by Soho uh, Tribeca, the charity filly that um, uh, Kath, uh, well, you might have heard her on radio talking about it from earlier this year. Um, so you've given the thumbs up then. I mean, it's pretty convenient, Mix close by and uh, uh, to get the... Uh, uh, the filly up and about. I suppose it's important as well to see how they're, they're faring, but I'm hearing positive things. I didn't know RSN was involved. Usually when they point to RSN, somehow I'm involved, but I'm feeling like that's not a bad thing on this occasion. Yeah, well, I think you are involved. You may not have seen the invoice yet, but it'll be coming. Um, but yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, it was Mick's idea um, when he knew the parade was on. Um, he broke her in and he really, really liked her. He said she was a very easy filly to break in. And he said, I'll get that filly up and working. And um, there might have been an, an opportunity for people to see her, but that mix going to kill more trots tonight. So that didn't happen. So I went around and worked her yesterday. And um, yeah, beautiful moving filly. Um, had a, 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 a lovely rear end on her, um, but be careful how I say that. But the four legged. Um, version that was and uh, very similar to him very square across the bum looked like she had a lot of power behind and um, we only hope that she can do half as good a job as what this bloke did um, you know he, he won over a million dollars and competed against some of the best horses we've had in his generation and was um, as good as them if not better I always say horses are like humans. Some are simply better looking than others. And it's the same with their behind. Some look better than others. It's just the way it is. It's a fact of life. Um, Soho Tribeca stands for $3,000 and uh, important with that, uh, uh, that heritage. And having seen him race too, and uh, it's one element that we've seen a little bit more of lately, I think, um, of our local stallions, but particularly the, the, the influence from the um, American sires for horses that have raced here and, and to go on. And there's a few about, another one will be coming up here in just a moment, but uh, to see him race and race so well at the top level and then to see him uh, be able to be a part of the, uh, the breeding uh, setup. I mean, it's very important to have the uh, colonial stallions about, but it's very important to have really good racehorses slash stallions about. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. And I think it's been great um, what we've seen over the last couple of years with uh, a lot of our Australian stock going, you know, to um, America and, and obviously Just Believe going to Europe and, 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 and again, um, um, Duncan Sauce, who's Elder Baron Zeus, who raced last night. To see that our Australian progeny can produce on the world stage, I think it just goes to show that our product is as good as anywhere in the world. And so there is absolutely no reason why our colonial stallions won't do as good a job as stallions anywhere else in the world. They would have, I've got no doubt that horses like this and Poster Boy, had they have competed on the world stage, they would have acquitted themselves very, very well. And um, they may be here today with uh, much higher price tags on them. Oh, I think we see that nowadays. Thanks, Tyson. Uh, Tyson looking after Soho Tribeca. Uh, Poster Boy will be coming out shortly. Um, when you look through the fields, particularly the Meadowlands on the weekend and the, the significant amount of Australian and or New Zealand bred horses and the influence that they're having now and the dominance that they're having now, we see a, a horse like Lock and Varat go over uh, and, and it's more highlighted because of the profile he went there with. But there are so many other top uh, quality horses that we can relate to having seen race here and go over there. So I don't think there's any doubt now more than ever in the last five years to know that our product is as good as anywhere in the world. Oh, I absolutely agree, you know, and, and horses that I have driven and that we have trained have gone to America and we thought they were nice horses. Um, they go there and then you look at the times they run and you think, well, what were we doing? But I think it just comes back to the, you know, their racetracks, their carts, some of the procedures that they're allowed to do over there that aren't allowed to be done here in Australia. Um, it, but it just goes to show our product is every bit as good as theirs. You know, we, we're starting to see, um, I think I saw the other day, Chartin's first foal goes through the auctions this year at Lexington um, by Captain Treacherous. It could, you know, it'll be interesting to see what she makes. She probably wasn't as glamorously bred as 
you know, some of the American mayors, but she was the greatest mayor to race in America in a long time. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that unfolds. Yeah, and, and really when she left here, she probably didn't have the profile of the other top horses that have gone over there. So that's probably more important in a way that horses of a, of a level, despite being progressive, uh, that not the absolute A graders initially that have gone over there and just blossomed. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Okay, well, we talk of poster boys, we're talking about the poster boy. Yes, we are, yeah, what a stunning individual he is. Uh, you know, son of Sun Beach where, Sun Beach somewhere, sorry, out of Aston Villa. Um, a magnificent racehorse himself. Um, from the day he stepped onto the racetrack, he looked all class and continued that right through his career. Um, that first start at Menangle um, was the only blemish in his form where he, uh, he, it was his only unplaced run in his career. Um, he could be excused that day. He ran into um, a very smart field and they went 151 and he, he had no luck at all. I watched the replay again just the other day and um, Chris just couldn't sort of get a gap early and he was caught three wide around the first corner and then sat outside the leader in 151. And then um, I think that uh, woke, his eye, woke him up a little bit as to what racing was and after that he never missed a beat. Um, he was unplaced in his next 29 starts, winning, uh, winning um, 22 of them. It's an extraordinary record. If, if you're looking next to you or somewhere in the crowd and there's a male and a female with two broad smiles from ear to ear next to him, it's probably Bill and Ann Anderson, and I'm sure they're pretty impressed with the way that he's holding his condition and, and the way he looks. Um, when he first came out, he, he, looked, he looked happy to be here, and hey, I would be too, don't worry about that. Uh, he's a pretty special horse, um, and I think so many people are looking forward to... Uh, uh, his progeny uh, hitting the racetrack um, uh, in next year, isn't it? Their uh, yearlings. Yes, now. Now, yes, I should know. I got one of them. Uh, yeah, yes, they are. Um, there's already really good talk about his yearlings. Um, again, Paul and I have seen um, quite a few of them. We saw three at Brett Bunfields, and we saw three at Nathan Jacks, and um, they're very happy with them. What we saw, we could not fault them. Um, they, obviously, there's another step to take on the racetrack, but everything suggests at this stage that um, he's going to do a great job in his first crop. He's been very well patronised by um, everyone, and, and Bill and Ann have um, put some of their nicest mares to him, so he's going to get a great chance. But um, you know, he's got the racetrack performance and the breeding behind him that suggests that he will be a, a great sire going forward. And and um, he's probably going to prove to be a very, very good value sire for the first three seasons, and that might change if his two-year-olds hit the track and do what we hope they do next season. So really, this is the opportunity at the moment. He's $4,500, including GST, but those two-year-olds hit the track quickly. I mean, if they're made up uh, physically not dissimilar to him, they're, they're more likely going to make the racetrack earlier than later. Um, he's beautifully set horse, not overly um, tall, uh, and that's one attribute that he had on the racetrack, that he was almost cat-like in a sense. He could adapt to every track, every turn. Um, he had a beautiful stride that was very rarely regulated because he was going into bends or the like. Um, so his physicality is, um, well, I think it was the main attribute that stood out and what probably, or prospectively, looks as one of the most at attractive aspects of him being uh, a stallion, a sire. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, if, if his progeny are like him, um, they're not going to have to wait too long till they perform at their best on a racetrack. You know, he, because he wasn't such a big horse, he hit the ground running. And um, I think I was watching his replays again last night. I think his first four or five starts, he was probably driven differently every time um, and adapted to every occasion. He could lead, he could run the gate, um, he could sit parked. He could hand up or he could take a sit. I think there was one of his feature wins where he made a couple of moves in the race and was still too strong for him at the end. You know, you're looking at a New South Wales derby winner, um, Vic Bread, two-year-old winner. Um, you know, he, he had everything going for him on the racetrack and, and he raced against some of the best horses that we've seen of his generation. He always paraded well. He presented beautifully. He was always a standout. So that's going to be a throwback. Uh, like Dad, he's going to have some very impressive foals and, and racehorses to hit the track because, again, that was one part of him that uh, I can't forget, I'm sure any of us can't, just how well he would look when he would grace the racetrack. Yeah, and I had the pleasure of uh, working one of his yearlings at Brett Bunfields, um, one of Bill and Ann's, the first foal of Pistol Abbey, 
And um, I, I, again, I could not fault it. It was a, a, a stunning baby to sit behind. Very, very correct. One thing, I it had gum barrel straight legs. Um, I'd be very surprised if he needed uh, any boots, but he may just for safety, but was just a, a very, very correct horse and, and already felt very push button. Um, the day I worked him, um, Brett worked the sister to Ladies in Red, who was another poster boy out of Cabalabar Karen, the first uh, of his crop. And um, the baby that I worked, it was the first time he, he had had a, a horse follow him. Um, he was a little unsure about that for about half a lap and then he took to it, um, you know, like you'd uh, love to see horses do. And um, yeah, he was, uh, you know, I was very, very impressed with him. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Ann and Bill would be wrapped to see him again. It'd be like seeing the... Uh uh, the, the son that has been living overseas during COVID that you haven't seen for a while uh, with the setup uh, over the last couple of years, but he looks absolutely stunning uh, and great to see him in the flesh again today. Thanks to Renee, uh, and that's poster boy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and, and the poster girl is Renee leading him. And uh, talking with Bill and Ann before too, ladies and reds going to be trialling tomorrow night. So we won't put any added pressure on you guys, but fingers crossed she comes through that well and we get to see her on the racetrack uh, shortly. And again, uh, Poster Boy is again part of the uh, Lower Long Farms stay in bonus for, uh, for anyone that breeds through him this year. In 2027, that progeny will be eligible for the $100,000 bonus if they can win a Vic Bread. Final and, and and obviously being a, a colonial, he is a twelve thousand dollar Vic bread bonus for anyone that breeds here in Victoria. I wonder if Kath's thought about this. If there's two, um, uh, the the half brother, yeah, a Yankee rock star is coming along. Um, we had two protests that were upheld at Melton on Friday night. Are you going to be a bit like Ladbrokes and sports bet, and you'll pay out when they're first past the post? How are you going to go with that? <laughs> There's something in the terms and conditions. Anyway, it's something let's, we might have to address. Let's hope it's a Quinella <laughs> and it goes either way. It goes either idea. way, yeah, if it's the same owner. So Yankee uh, Rockstar, Rockstar by, uh, by name and also by performance uh, and by looks. Uh, he's been on the roster here for the last couple of years? Yeah, that's right. Um, how many seasons has oh, he had? A few years uh, now, isn't it? Fourth year. Yeah, so he's got uh, he's already got horses on the racetrack, this fella. He's done a great job so far. He's had 18 starters for 11 winners. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's progeny of hit the ground. He has a uh, finalist in the three-year-old Phillies Vic Bread final next week in Shamar Princess. She's been going very well. She um, probably didn't appreciate the slower speed early in that race last night, but she was doing her best work at the end. And, yeah, he uh, he's already successful as a, as a sire. So we... Um, you know, and, and we've just spoken about Poster Boy and, and, you know, out of Aston Villa, who's been a great producer herself. And um, we have here another son of Aston Villa. Yeah, Aston Villa, not just a very good football team uh, in the UK, but a wonderful producer of good racehorses as well. Um, terrific racehorse. That's one attribute that he had through his career. He knew how to win a race, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. I think he won his first six straight. Um, won a Kilmore Cup in uh, coming from second or third last on the corner. Um, on a stall cup in track record time. So, yeah, no, he, uh, he was an exceptional racer. Big tracks, racehorse. little tracks. Again, another classic case where it didn't matter. He, the horses uh, could adapt. He was just a good horse that could adapt to whatever track that was thrown his way. Yeah, that's right. As I said, when he won the Kilmore Cup, I think he was third last at the 400 and had to come five and six wide around the home corner and, and still got up. And, and then, like you said, he, he won the Stall Cup in track record time when he led around one of the tighter tracks in the state. So very, very um, adaptable. And that's something that clearly comes from the mayor's, you know, mayor's bloodline. She, uh, poster boy, was the same. So if you're looking at breeding great racehorses, um, you can't go far wrong with either of these boys here. I mean, is, do you see any similarities, poster boy, Yankee rock star, as half-brothers? Um, I mean, I can't, but they're both... Uh, absolutely fantastic in both of them individually you know the characteristics that are there that I can't quite see that are similar yeah no I don't really myself Dan they are individuals um, obviously um, different sire lines by rock and roll Hanover and the other bloke was by some beach somewhere so they may have been stamped a little bit by their father that way but um, this bloke's coat isn't quite as good as some of the others because he's a, a rug wrecker he can't wear rugs so his coat isn't quite as flash as the other boys. 
Um, it doesn't go through his progeny, so don't worry. Um. <laughs> well, one was one was a surfer dude being by some beach somewhere, and this one was perhaps from a lead singer of a rock and roll, the heavy metal band. Yeah, well, they they usually rip their shirts off at the end of the night, don't they? So that might have been the Makes the reason now. for that. Yeah. So, yeah, Yankee's got um, you know he's uh, like I said he's got eleven winners already on the ground and. Um, very nice racehorses. They appear to do everything right. Um, very interesting. Of his 11 winners, there's six of those are three by three crosses to Arts Place. So um, anyone out there with a, an art major mayor or a sports writer, sports writer mayor, um, that cross is proving, you know, um, to be a winning cross already on the racetrack with him. You know, more than 50% of his winners so far are along, are bred along those lines. Thanks, Tyson. Uh, looking after Yankee Rockstar, uh, Grandy Sir, uh, he's a very affordable fee. He's nineteen hundred and eighty uh, dollars is his uh, service fee, which includes the GST. Uh, he's on uh, page one hundred and forty of your Austra Australian um, Breeders Guide as well, um, and uh, he's the uh, uh, very affordable um, Colonial Stallion. That's right, and again, he's a, his progeny are eligible for the one hundred thousand dollar low long farm bonus in twenty twenty seven if you breed to him this season as was the case last year, and also $12,000 Vic Bread Pure bonus. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? Those Vic Bread Pure bonuses, they, they lift, and it's an important time um, uh, uh, for that positivity and getting those, uh, that extra bonuses through the, through the Vic Bread uh, on two fronts, not just what Lower Long is putting up as a bonus. If you can win the, the Vic Bread starting from Stallion's... Uh, or services from this year, but the Vic Breed Pure as well, a few thousand dollars extra, uh, in a lot of cases, that's a fair portion of your service fee to breed again if you're able to get a, an early season Vic Breed Pure uh, win. Yeah, exactly, and, and as you said, this that, that bloke himself is very, very well priced. Um, you know, Kath um, looks after people that breed to him very well. Um, so if you win that Vic Bread bonus, it's very, very cheap. You've still got $10,000 in your pocket after paying a service fee to Yankee Rockstar. So I've got a know. family, mate. Believe me, there's no 10 grand <laughs> left, but um, <laughs> I like your thinking. <laughs> we might be able to get you in a few more of them horses, Dan. <laughs> um, Jake LaMotta, well, Jake would be his nickname, wouldn't it? have to be Raging Bull. Um, we had a chat with the owner last year, Raging Bull. And he's a... I mean, he's a really impressive individual. It's funny the way he comes out here. He looks like he's a little bit scared if someone put on gloves, but he's an impressive type. You wouldn't want to get in the ring with him. I fear that I'd end up only silver medal. Yeah, I think he's a pretty kind horse, so he, he might not hurt you too much, Dan. But um, he is a stunning individual, obviously a son of Christian Cullen. Um, we, anyone that got to see him knew that he was a stunning animal himself, and he certainly stamped this bloke. And... And, and he, again, um, has that great cross where he's out of an arts place mare. So, um, you know, it's, it's a very popular cross that people are looking for now, crossing arts place through um, both uh, their dam and their sire line. And this horse offers that as well as that Christian Cullen blood as well. And, uh, you know, he's proven on the racetrack. Um, he, uh, he had a very slow start to his career in the breeding barn, just doing very small numbers in New Zealand. Um, but he had winners on the ground straight away. And his best performer, uh, Wild West, um, who's uh, a very well-performed horse in Western Australia. He won a uh, WA Cup. Um, he's actually back on the track and he won on Friday night, which is very timely for today's uh, parade. So, yeah, he, um, he's won over half a million dollars Wild West and doing a great job. That's what we need to do, don't you find it, whenever yearling sales come along, significant victories on the racetrack have a major impact of the yearling sales. We just need to be more alert uh, as to which ones that are really need to be pushed for racehorses coming back, and they just seem to be able to win. It happens every year in both codes, but we're always too late from the racetrack point of view, but to take it up at the yearling sales is a little bit different. You mentioned that Christian Cullen influence, and you can sort of see it there, can't you? Like, it, it's, it's amazing... Uh, how there can be a bit of a throwback there. Um, he's got a, a, a well put together um, physique. Um, uh, he, he, I know they had, because he was in New Zealand initially, wasn't he? He did he stand in New Zealand? Yes, first? he did. Yeah. Yes, yes, he he served um, probably three or four seasons in New Zealand before he came. Actually, probably even more because his oldest progeny uh, around eight or nine years old. He's already had. Um, uh, one of his dams, uh, one of his daughters, sorry, a, a mare that actually I knew a little bit about, um, our bare knuckle, 
Um, her first foal has already gone through the New Zealand sales and is actually a racehorse already. Um, it's had one start for Barry Purden, and ran a very respectable fourth at its only start as a two-year-old against the older horses. I think they actually paid quite good money for that horse in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, he's already stamping himself as a uh, as a grandfather. And I like the name throwback, Albert Knuckle, the, the boxing reference there to, to Raging Bull. There was a very good horse that the Knights had, won a Kilmore Cup called Raging Bull uh, back in the 80s. So it, I must be getting old when these names are resurfacing again, but um, there is a common denominator. Um, they're both good horses. Yeah, well, it, it seems to have worked a little bit before my time. Sorry, Dan, but um, I have heard of him. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you, you're right. It, it, maybe uh, anyone that wants to going back to the 80s it's not make sure that you long ago, uh, is it? <laughs> well, I wish it wasn't that long ago, but it is unfortunately. So, um, um, Raging Bull stands for thirty three hundred dollars. Yeah, that's right. And again, he is also eligible. His progeny are eligible for the Low Long Farms hundred thousand dollar bonus, and he is Vic Bread Pure eligible as well. So, um, yeah, great. Great option there to get into those um, those bloodlines, the Arts Place, Christian Cullen Cross. Um, you can't go wrong. Thanks, Renee. Done a stellar job. Uh, the team here, they always do. What else would you expect, Renee Tyson and, uh, and Becky? Um, that's the last of the stallions. We're going to have some yearlings and weanlings coming out shortly, but we've got some prizes to give away. So you're welcome to go and get another drink, something to eat, whatever you want to do. But keep your ears peeled because we've got some prizes that we'll be giving away now and some a little bit later on as well. So just, uh, just uh, hold fire for a sec or get your um, ticket numbers uh, ready. Uh, and the, uh, the yearlings and the weanlings will be coming out uh, very shortly. We've got the tickets here, guys. So um, we'll do these draws very shortly. Sally's coming up. I'll, uh, I'll hold the tray down. I'll allow you to... Uh, oh, you you can do the drawing. So we've got everyone's... To go with the red wine, did you say? Um, <laughs> what have we got, Sal? The got equine light mask. Equine light mask, and it is uh, Kelly K uh, E41 is the ticket number. Kelly. So this is yours, Kelly. I think it's K. Yeah, Kelly it's K. Kelly yep, K, 41. Yes. E41. But the name will be suffice. Yeah. I think they hid a $1,000 cash in one of them. They just forgot which prize it was in, Kelly, so just check underneath in case. Now we've got a whole from lead set for, uh, donated by Saddle World Shepparton. So from Saddle World Shepparton, the halter and lead set. Uh, so you want me to do this? Yeah, you do it. All the losers will be forgiving that I didn't get your name out. <laughs> or come up and see me and we can work it out. Um, <laughs> uh, Leanne Stewart. Good on you, Leanne. Another headstall lead, or? You can do another, um, another headstall lead set. Yeah, another lead set. Oh, they're well, uh, well screwed up, these. Uh, I think I have ripped it. <laughs> Um, it is, uh, I think it's Vince, it's E47, I've ripped it where the name is. Um, Vince got a longer. That's Vinny. So Vinny. He'll have the head still on leave, it'll will. do him well. That so me. that will be music to your ears, that, uh, that prize, good on you mate. <clears throat> there you go Grant. So we'll have some more prizes at the end of the yearling, um, uh, Weanling Parade, we'll, we'll have some more prizes uh, then to give away as well, including service for the Yankee rock star. We've got the Nutrien uh, Yearling nomination, a free service to lather up as well. And you get that, you can start thinking of the names you can come up with. Even rename your mare to make it sound even better. What about a wine, Dan? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, thank you. I'll pick one. Uh, I was two, we can share. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so a bottle of wine. David Shepherd. David Shepherd. See, that worked better, Grant. You opening him up, <laughs> multitasking there. Um, David Shepherd, you got a bottle of wine. So another bottle. Yep. This is not, not as easy this time, is it, Grant? <laughs> you plucked the one that wasn't folded before. There was no crease on it whatsoever. Uh, Grant Campbell, do you know him? 
Uh, um, is it Arch? Um, e forty eight's the ticket. Anastasia used the surname. Archie, Archie Anastasia, yep. Yeah. And from Drovers uh, in Achuka, the, the halter there. Good on you, Archie. Well done. And the bottle of wine. I was, oh, sorry, that, uh, that was the bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were keeping it for me. Oh, Seriously. There, yeah, you? I know. Um, Norman Abood. Norman, you've got the, uh, uh, the headset, uh, the halter. Yeah, that's the last door. And that's the last of those prizes, but there's a few more to give away a little bit later. Uh, very shortly, we're going to have the uh, uh, parade of uh, weanlings and, uh, and some yearlings that are, are coming out uh, to have a look at uh, with the, the size of uh, that you've already seen parade uh, a short while ago, Grant. Are you allowed to sort of rate them on what you saw, like if uh, it was a competition and we had to give scores, or is that unfair? Yeah, it's probably unfair, probably isn't it? Probably in private, Sounds I can. Sounds good, though. Yeah, maybe private, not publicly. Okay. Yeah. So with that uh, bottle of red that Sally's got for us later on, we can talk about that. Look, they're very impressive, though. That's one thing about uh, stallions, and it doesn't really matter what uh, code of racing it is. They're very impressive individuals, um, aren't they? Uh, I mean, they, they stand out for a reason. They've got to promote themselves in a way. They've got to look good. It's funny, you can have the best CV in the world, but if you look good as well, uh, it just uh, it helps. And, and they all look fantastic, living a, a wonderful life. When I get an opportunity to retire and want a lush green paddock, I know where I'm going to come to. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, Dan. Um, but I don't think it's, it's not everything to breeders um, because a lot of breeders have never really had the opportunity to see stallions up close. But it definitely helps. You know, there's been comments of people who have seen, you know, horses like Raging Bull and they're like... Um, we want to breed to him after seeing him. He's just a stunning individual. Um, they've gone back and researched him a bit more and they've found that uh, he was an exceptional racehorse and exceptionally well bred and he's gone from not being on their radar to back on their radar. So hence why, um, you know, this is such a successful day and such a great idea by Kath. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess it gets a boy, gives the boys a chance to show off. You know, um, they probably enjoy it as much as what we do. Yeah, I reckon we would. Um... <laughs> Tell us about um, the, the one stallion that we didn't see today. Um, the frozen semen is only available for help is on the way. So what can you tell us about help is on the way? Yeah, well, he's a, uh, a son of Chapter 7. So obviously we spoke a little bit about that, that siring line with um, King of the North. Um, and, and yeah, so he is a, a feature winning trotter himself. Um, he was the first Chapter 7 blood available in this part of the world. He has a very small number of um, foals already on the ground here from frozen semen and um, Kath has secured the rights to him um, so anyone that wants to go maybe one strain closer to chapter seven um, helpers on the way is available and um, standing at five thousand I'm pretty sure yeah five thousand yeah. and a page in the statin guide page 152 as well so keep in mind help is on the way um, which is always required. Now, coming into our uh, parade ring here, uh, we've got the Plead the Fifth Soho Tribeca filly with uh, Holly. Yep. That's the first filly to and walk in. And the poster boy Soho Champagne uh, with Tyson at the back. And the Lather Up Artistic Pleasure, uh, led by Becky. Oh, I like... I, if you need, someone needs a hand naming this horse, I'm, I'm putting my hand up. Um, the Lather Up Artistic Pleasure with, uh, with Becky. So they're the, um, the youngsters that we're seeing uh, parade at the moment. So what sort of attributes are we looking at? Remembering that the horse that is first with Holly is the Soho Tribeca filly? Yeah, that's right. She's um, out of a, a mare plead the fifth, <coughs> who was a rock and roll Hanover mare. Um, and uh, she, won, uh, she went 157 herself and won five races. Um, and Plead the Fifth was a sister to Morton Plains, who was a Group 1 winner herself. She won the three-year-old Vic Bread final. So, um, <clears throat> again, we're seeing, uh, you know, a lovely type by um, Soho Tribeca. He's second crop. Obviously, we'll, uh, we will have progeny on the ground, and this will be the next year to follow. Um, obviously, these guys have uh, battled through a bit of a winter, so they've got a little bit of a coat on them. But, um, 
yeah, lovely grown, lovely well grown filly, and um, we're hoping that uh, she can do a, a great job in another 18 months time. So there are three fillies that are out there at the moment with uh, Tyson, who with the last of the three fillies has the poster boy uh, out of Soho Champagne. Yeah, that's right. Um, she's had four starters, Soho Champagne, to the racetrack for four winners. Soho Angels won 168,000. Soho all shook up. Um, he went 156.8 himself and Soho Bollinger went 154. Um, so you've got that, uh, that lovely cross there. Um, she was an Arts Place mare herself, so this will be a, um, another 3x3 three three cross to Arts Place. So from what we've uh, heard earlier, that should be a very, very successful mating. Um, maybe uh, got a little bit more growing to do that one, but very sensible. Um, and uh, yeah, let's hope, uh, as Poster Boy did, this one can hit the ground running nice and early. I've got Mark Hughes here. He'll give us a rundown on the uh, artistic pleasure uh, Philly by, by Lather Up. It's got one of those names that uh, I think we'll all have a bit of fun with. But tell us about your thoughts. Uh, it's led around by uh, Becky, uh, which is the, uh, the second. So if you're looking at the three of them all in a line, it's Becky's in the middle with uh, the, the Lather Up Artistic Pleasure. Uh, very athletic looking filly, Dan. Um, bred by prominent um, New South Wales owner Wayne Loder. Um, and as I mentioned earlier today, it seems to be the lather up fillies that are uh, hitting the track running, particularly in North America. Uh, just the one thing on lather up from this year's yearling sales, probably one of the first times in history at an Australian sale, and it was in Tasmania, granted, but a first season sire has topped a sale, um, and Lather Up did that in Tasmania. Um, sold a gelding colt for 47 and a half grand. So, uh, yeah, um, was out of Bowtide's family. Um, probably had a little bit to do with it, but he was a magnificent animal. Um, so, I'd say this is one of these ones that may make its way to the sale. I guess time will tell. But um, from a sale perspective, um, Lather Up's on the ball straight away. We've sold a number of weanlings by him in New Zealand as well at the sales earlier this year. They made handy money. Um, and But certainly this filly is a very attractive type athletic as well. OK, and I'll just run through the order. The first one uh, was the Soho Tribeca filly led by Holly. Uh, the second is the, uh, the Lather Up filly with Becky. And the third is the Poster Boy filly led around by Tyson. Thanks, guys. We're going to get the, uh, the next group out uh, shortly. Um, yeah, that's interesting with those sales in Tassie as well. It was pretty much a select sale, but they've done well to get a, uh, a top lot like that, uh, but also from a well-known family, particularly suitable and relatable to, the, to Tasmania. Yeah, look, ab absolutely. Um, and I guess the thing there as well, being by a, obviously the horse standing here, he's, he's a Vic Bread stallion now, lather up, which um, adds to his uh, credentials. But as I said before, and um, out of one of Barry Rattray's time-honoured families, and he's been on him since the start. Thanks, Paulie. You love pushing me around. Well, if um, there's any family that can produce a good horse as well, whenever you mention the word Rattray, it's a rarity if they don't get a good quality young horse uh, two out of every three years, if not more often. Yeah, totally. Like you saw, saw Magician last week do a uh, sensational job um, in the Eureka. Um, everybody thought he was making up the numbers and he clearly wasn't. I saw Barry back in July, I watched the horse work and saw him in the flesh and he said to me he, w he wouldn't be making up the numbers, they have a high opinion of him. Um, and as I said before, when you've got these time-honoured horsemen that have been around the block for a long, long time, you really listen to what they've got to say. We only have to look similar to Bowtide early on in his career. He had form lines that weren't dissimilar and look what he went on to do once he got to compete against the better uh, class of horses. So in the end, that Eureka result, it was shared by Australia really, wasn't it? Whether you look at the podium between South Australia, Queensland, Victoria and Tasmania, I think it was a fitting result. Yeah, look, the money was shared around and Tyson Linky, who has been a top South Australian breeder for a long time, um, you know, it was a great, a great reward for him, great reward for Summer Bloodstock. The dam of in Cypher is actually booked to bet as delight this season. Um, so that's a, that's, um, that's a direction Tyson's heading in. He's been a, a fairly um, very, very, very good breeder of not a lot of horses for a long time. Uh, anything special that came out of last night's Vic Breads that uh, you're looking forward to next week? Uh, oh, look, for us, um, we had, look, we had three winners by our boys last night. I think the rise of Sweet Lou continues unabated for us. 
Um, North America, um, third on the all-age leading three-year-old sire. He's just a dominant sire down here now, so we'll look forward to those uh, uh, two-year-old of Keith Cochins at one, and obviously um, uh, Bella's um, the last one. <laughs> I can't remember the Bruce Edwards Sweet bread. Bella. Sweet Bella, who's yeah. undefeated. So for us, um, the, the Sweet Lou prominence as well as American Ideal. Down by the seaside, it's qualified a few as well, which is really good off low numbers. Yeah, yeah. Now looking forward to that. It's a big week for all the Vic, uh, the breeders uh, next week. Well, we've got a bit of colour here, haven't we, guys? The uh, the past the Stevens. Um, uh, is stamping a bit of a mark there, um, Grant Campbell. Um, uh, you're not going to miss these, and it's going to come in handy on a dark night, particularly for the first one, which is led by Becky. It's the, out of Moonshine Stride. Both of these are fillies by Pastor Stephen. The first one is by Out of Moonshine Stride, and the second one out of Claudie's Queen. Yeah, that's right, Dan. The, the first filly that Becky's got there, Out of Moonshine Stride. She's a majestic sun mare. Um, who we know too well in this part of the world, um, and was out of a sun on mare herself. So um, you can, as you said, he is definitely stamp them with. Uh, we'll spot them from a mile away. Um, the the filly, that first filly out of Moonshine Stride, um, that family goes back to Dusk Stride, um, and is a daughter of Princess Della, um, who's had eight starters for six winners in New Zealand, and a few that we might know in this part of the world were um, a horse called Just a Cracker that Lance Justice had. Kai Valley Mac that Chris Lang had, he won 142,000. And Deal or No Deal that Chris Lang had as well, who won 90,000. So um, Moonshine Stride herself won four races, went 157.3. Um, and uh, this, is, this is possibly one of her earlier foals, maybe her first foal. So um, this filly will be offered up in uh, next year's yearling sales. Um, so if you like what you see there and you like what you saw in Pastor Stephen, um, you can turn up and buy this filly next season. Well, they both they both stand out. The big blaze on the uh, the moonshine stride, but even that that colour of the tail. I'm not even sure what it is. It's too uh, indifferent to be a, a flaxen colour, but it's almost in part roan. It it stands out in itself. The Cordy's Queen. Yeah, it's interesting how some sires throw a bit of that through their foals. He didn't have, he didn't appear to have a lot of that himself. Um, he stood out himself in his it's stature. Like a fox but, tail. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, these two are standing out with those markings. But, um, yeah, the filly that Tyson's got there is out of Cla Claudie's Queen. She was unraced. Um, she is a sister to four starters who were th with three winners, Claudie's Fancy, my mate Claudie. Uh, there was an unraced sister there, Elle Finesse, who is, um, has been a great producer herself. She's produced Claudie's Princess, who won 400,000. I think she won the two, three and four-year-old Vic Brad trotting finals. Um, also, um, Claudie's Prince, he won 127,000 and Claudie and Gus won 45,000. So um, it's a very good family. Um, and, and yeah, you've got that Pastor Stephen influence over them. And um, again, that filly will be offered up at the uh, yearling sales next season. Thanks, Becky and, and Tyson. Becky in front with the Pastor Stephen Moonshine Stride filly and uh, Tyson leading the Pastor Stephen Claudie's Queen filly, both very colourful types. So I reckon you'll be able to pick them out in, uh, in, uh, in six months or so uh, with those uh, outstanding markings for sure. So we've got another group coming along uh, shortly. We've got another couple of groups coming along uh, shortly. Um, mentioning the Vic Breads last night while you are there, uh, it's good to see your wife back, uh, Karen. Um, she, I think, uh, on advice initially given by her, her doctors, I think she's still supposed to be on the sidelines nursing three broken vertebrae, but she came back uh, about, what, four or five weeks earlier than what was initially anticipated. If the question is, am I surprised that Karen hasn't listened to advice? No, I'm not surprised, Dan. <laughs> I don't think that surprises um, anyone. We're talking about pedigrees here. Um, she definitely throws to her father, I can tell you that. Um, but no, it was great to see her. She's an ultimate competitor. She just loves it. Um, and, and yeah, you know, she's been able to get the drives on some very nice horses. Um, she had a couple of her own in in the last race last night, which was a bit of a battle to wait up for at 11 o'clock. And one of those qualified for the final. Um, but yeah, she, um, she loves it. And uh, she's very good at it and very proud of her. Um, but yeah, I, I don't uh, have any part in whether uh, she's back too early or, or not. I just stay out of that because it's a, a losing argument, that one. Yeah, look, I was surprised. But she told me, um, like, I think it was the second week. Um, I remember seeing you guys at stall and, and it would have been 
it was pretty fresh. Like she was moving pretty well. And then she said to me, I think I might drive one in the next couple of days. And I thought she was just mucking around. But she was serious, wasn't she? And then within a, another week after that, I think she was at the races. I had to text her to say, are you really driving on Saturday night? And she was. Yeah, probably one thing. Um, a lot of the a lot of drivers and a lot of the, the female drivers they need a lot of strength through their back. They may not have the upper strength that the guys have. And Karen's been seeing a physio for a long time because she has a bit of trouble with her back. But that physio has commented on on how strong her back is, and I think that's held her in really good stead with the injury that she suffered. It wasn't structural. It was um, so that wasn't an issue. It was so it was more about her being comfortable. And um, I think the bigger problem was she wasn't as comfortable doing as much as the groundwork as what she was having to do, just sending me up the track to work them. And she thought, bugger this, I've got to get back in that cart. So, so the roles change pretty quickly. Well, I, I imagine you might have talked last night and knowing Karen, um, even she could drive a champion and she'd probably be more inclined to say, gee, it goes all right. And I imagine that'd be similar words after that draw a dream one last night. Yeah, pretty humble. I, like that's a, she's an amazing, exciting filly, that one. She's shown that from uh, her first two starts, even before the other night. Um, you know, secretly, I think Karen is very excited about her. And after watching her last night, there's every reason why you would be. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it was very enjoyable. OK, the next group that we've got out here, uh, we've got the uh, Better's Delight Colt out of Arden New Butte with uh, Renee. Uh, Renee's at the front and... Just uh, love the way that, you know, the education just to step over that mat there. Um, it's a process, isn't it? And it just shows you the thought process of a young horse experiencing it perhaps for the first time and the way they go about it. Don't know if everyone saw that, but just checked it wasn't uh, the edge of a cliff that he was, she was walking into, or he was walking into, I should say. Um, and that's the, uh, the Better's Delight cult led by Becky out of Gentle Anvil. And uh, Holly has the bold eagle filly out of aspiring Eva. Um, Mark Hughes is here to talk about the, uh, the Better's Delight uh, Colts. Uh, the first one is uh, led by uh, Renee, which is out of Arden New Butte. You just put your hand up, uh, Renee, your left hand up, just so everyone can identify which of the Better's Delights we're talking about. Um, so this one is out of Arden New Butte, Mark. Yeah, Dan, look, uh, two Better's Delight Colts here and they Better's Delight needs no introduction. Um, the first one, Art New Butte, is actually rebooked to go to Better's Delight this season for Ann and Bill Anderson. Uh, the second Better's Colt is obviously a full brother to the big boss um, who won the Nutrient Sales race a couple of weeks ago um, and looks like a genuine bona fide superstar. Better's Delight Colts are still very, very well sought at any yearling sale anywhere in the world. Um, Better's Delight is 25 now. Um, he shuttled down this year in magnificent order. Um, and uh, just remains the greatest stallion of all time. But more importantly, his sons are still well sought after at any yearling sale anywhere. Uh, the big boss one is out of a Christian Cullen mare, of course, the Golden Cross that everybody knows about. Better's Delight out of Christian Cullen, which even to this day and age is leaving very nice trotters as well. Um, London to a Bricks out of a Cullen there, and he's the best trotter in, uh, well, best three year old trotter in Australia anyway, Colton Gelding wise. So um, the Andersons, long time supporters of ours, so a big shout out to them. Once again, they've committed to our stallions this year American Ideal, Better's Delight, and Sweet Lou. Um, great families of theirs, time honoured Australian families, but more importantly, a massive, um, you know, touch of uh, American influence in their uh, blood. Um, and this uh, Better's Delight cult, um, they're both real standouts. Obviously still a little bit woolly um, based on, uh, you know, the time of the year. But heading into spring, these boys will start to flourish. OK. Um, they're both uh, parade uh, lovely. Um, the cults, like temperament-wise, what are the sort of things you would expect to see? I mean, there's been plenty of Better's delight colts around that you would have seen uh, firsthand. So uh, what sort of a throwback, what sort of common denominator are you are seeing here? I think one of the, the one of the key things with Better's Delight, a lot of his, particularly, look, all of his foals are kind, but the colts have always been really kind, that we've handled and broken in and sold as weanlings and at sales. That's one trait he does throw into his colts, the ones that we specifically sold and handled over the journey. 
Uh, temperament. Um, their father's temperament remains A1. Um, one of the things that betters throws, which a lot of other stallions don't, just don't throw, is big, big engines. Um, betters, betters' sons and daughters have got big engines. Now, even at the tender age of 25, he's second on the USTA um, two-year-old size list this year. Um, so, year in, year out, um, he just, just keeps getting the job done. But they're easy to handle, easy to work with, and uh, they, uh, they are special types. OK, thanks, uh, Mark. So they were the Betters Delight Arden New Butte, which is the first one, led by Renee. Becky has the uh, second Betters Delight, the colt out of uh, Gentle Anvil. And we're going to speak with Tirrit Maloney here, who's uh, got uh, the, the Bold Eagle aspiring Eva uh, filly, led by Holly. Um, uh, Jared, first of all, um, uh, tell, you've got a really good story to tell about uh, about the mare here. I mean, she's beautifully bred. You've had a little bit of luck, but that's great. No one wishes you ill. We just want to rub you for good luck, so it's it's shared. But uh, relation to, to Veltino, who looks very impressive as well, uh, and you own a share in, in Veltino, so things are looking up, but tell us how it came about. Uh, yeah, originally I bought the, um, the mare aspiring Eva from the Nutrient Woolly Sale, um, and then the, the sales come up the next year and the Love You Colt was in, in there. And I thought, if I've got any confidence in the mayor, I should take a share in this. So I spoke to um, um, the Fitzpatricks and I was able to buy a small share in Veltino. Um, and he's come out and he's not surprised me, but um, nine starts, five, four wins, three seconds, a third and an unplaced for, um, for a two-year-old trotting colt. That's pretty handy. Yeah. Oh, my word, it is, and it's exciting, and he should be getting better as well. Um, if you had a look through the calendar through the next 12 months, where all the feature um, uh, races are? I'm just waiting for uh, this Saturday first, uh, where he's in the two-year-old colt's um, Vic Bread final. So um, hopefully we might get a nice draw, and I think we should be competitive. Uh, I'm sure you will be competitive. Well, that's a big thrill in itself. Um, now you're entrenched with uh, uh, being involved with a good horse, with a lovely mare. Uh, you're compelled to breed, breed again. So tell us who's your choice this year. Who uh, are you going to send Aspiring Eva to? Aspiring Eva <coughs> will go to King of the North. Um, Aspiring Eva herself has got a little quirk that she's very difficult to catch. So as long as Kath can catch her, we'll be breeding her to uh, King of the North. Oh, well, you'll get a phone call. It'll either go two ways. Uh, as I expect it to go, yet yeah, no problem. Uh, let you know in 30 days if she's pregnant or not. Or um, she just doesn't get in foal because <laughs> nobody can catch her. But I think that's highly unlikely here. Yeah. They're well versed at that. That's very exciting um, to have the horse uh, this week in particular because um, it's uh, Veltino that we're talking about in the, in the two-year-old trotters Vic Bread final uh, next Saturday night, but the uh, uh, the value of your mare, I imagine, uh, would have to be just on the up as a result. Def definitely, and um, <clears throat> like with the uh, Bold Eagle filly too, there's only seven of Bold Eagle foals born, so she's one of seven, two colts and five fillies, um, and Bold Eagle was certainly a superstar over in Europe, so uh, hopefully the bloodlines all click and uh, she'll be going to the nutrient sales next year and she'll definitely be for sale, so uh, we're hoping for, for good things and big things with her. Excellent. Oh, well, well done there. Sometimes it's about taking a chance. He who dares usually wins, otherwise they're flat on their face and they learn a valuable lesson uh, to get faster, fitter and stronger and bounce back, which is generally what happens. So uh, hopefully you have hit the nail on the head there. Good luck Saturday night, step by step, and good luck uh, going forward as well, Jared. Thanks, Dan, and like everybody here, we just keep trying. Thank you. Yeah, we do. We're resilient, aren't we? Um, no doesn't mean much in the harness racing language like it does to the rest of human society. Uh, but it's great to see. So thanks to Jared, thanks to the team that brought out uh, those uh, young horses. We've got another group to come out. Um, and thank you to Mark Hughes too. Uh, please give Mark a, a round of applause. Instrumental, uh, the association, not just through Woodlands, but also through Lower Long as well is, is, uh, is so important. So good on you, Mark, and knows everything about uh, a fantastic bunch of stallions as well, rightly to be uh, proud of. Uh, Dan, just uh, very quickly with Jared being up here too, don't forget that the Swan Hill Stallion Tender is on at the minute as well. So get behind and support the Swan Hill Harness Racing Club. You can go to their website or their Facebook page to get involved in that. Lower Long Farms have got a 
Strong contingent, Grant, you're going to have to help me out there because I can't remember who's... King of the North is definitely one of them. King of the North, uh, Raging Bull and Yankee Rockstar. Yeah, thank you. They're all available. Make sure you go to the Swan Hill Harness Racing Club uh, website and you'll be able to see it there. It's in blue. It all stands out very well. And uh, Jared's got to get better at this. I mean, you guys have been speaking about just about everything. Um, surely you could have been able to get across the stadium tender, Dan. Oh, well, that's why we just took a breath. You just wanted that limelight again, didn't you? So... Um, <laughs> I, uh, and you know they're brothers, don't you? Are, are they? Are you full brothers? No, no. Seriously, people might be wanting to know what's the age difference, and uh, at what age did did Paul get dropped on his melon? Clearly, <laughs> clearly, I'm the younger one, and the, and the more mature one, wouldn't you say? Um, no arguments from here. We could we could ask for a raise of hands. Who believes that statement? <laughs> no hands raised, Paul. So. Uh, stay impartial, it's usually the safest thing to do. But often, with a, I suppose Campbell's a more common name, but um, sometimes um, people don't necessarily put the two and two together. And you are brothers and full brothers. Yes, we are. Yeah, I actually have a twin brother, um, uh, and that is not Paul. I am three and a half years younger than Paul, even though I might look ten years younger, but um, it is only three and a half years. <laughs> but I do have a twin brother, and he's not involved in harness racing. Um, as these uh, uh, youngsters come into the parade ring here, this is the fourth and final group. Uh, we've got uh, Philly in a colt. Uh, Tyson is leading the colt, which is uh, a tall, dark stranger. I'm talking about Tyson here. Um, but the stallion also is tall, dark stranger out of Treasure Me. And Holly uh, has the tall, dark stranger, uh, Philly, uh, out of Tell Me Tales. Yeah, that's right, Dan. So these are the first progeny of uh, Tall Dark Stranger that we see here in Australia. Um, his first crop of uh, babies in America will go to the sales this year um, and they'll be, I'm tipping, very, very sought after. He was a champion racehorse himself. He went 147.1. Uh, he won over $2 million US Pacer of the Year in 2020. He was a six-time Group 1 winner. Um, he had 22 starts for 19 wins and two placings, so he's only missed a place once in his career won the Breeders' Crown as a two-year-old, and then he won um, the, what they call the stallion-making races in, the, in North America. He won the North American Cup, the Meadowlands Pace, uh, the Cane Pace and the Tattles Pace. So he was a freak of a horse himself. Um, and, yeah, now we're starting to get our uh, at the first look at these guys here. Um, they'll be very sought after when they go through the ring. Um, one, because of uh, for that connection to Tall Dark Stranger, their father, um, but two, they are both out of um, extremely good mares and great families and we believe they will be very, very sought after. The cult that Tyson's got is out of a mare, Treasure Me. Um, she was uh, unraced her dam, <coughs> Rever Revere Me is a sister to Adore Me, who we all know very well. She won 1.6 million and Have Faith in Me. He won 1.9 million, going 147.5. I believe they were both possibly Australasian mile record holders I think at the time I know Adore Me was when she went 147.7 um, at Menangle these are times, we're not talking about times that they've run on the American tracks, we're talking about here in Australia so um, an amazing family that and then it stems even further back to Chris and me Dream About Me, Hans Christian just a prolific New Zealand family So all of the uh, youngsters that we've seen parade are they all going to the sales? All of these ones that you've seen here today yes they are, all ten of them Okay, so you can keep them in mind. You can even come back, uh, ring up, uh, have an appointment, even to come and check on the progress on some of these if you're uh, taken by them uh, today and uh, uh, keep uh, um, close to potentially owning one of the horses that you've seen parade, uh, parade today. It's very exciting and uh, it's amazing uh, in the flesh. I, I remember uh, a time in particular, and I'm just slightly swapping codes, but you'll know where I'm coming from, I was in a paddock um, at Cambridge Stud, this very famous thoroughbred stud in New Zealand, and looking at a, a, a group of mares with foals at foot in the paddock. Uh, thanks, guys. Won't hold you up anymore. Thanks, Tyson. Thanks. Probably really quickly. Sorry, Dan. Tall dark stranger. In. We didn't really touch on Holly's filly uh, too much. She's out of Tell Me Tales, who a lot of people here will know really well. She was a Group 1 winning mare herself. She won 360,000. She won 20 races. She went 149.3 herself. Um, so, um, you know, again, I'm tipping that uh, anyone at the yearling sales next year, they should be uh, having a very close look at these fillies. They've seen them at, uh, sorry, the filly and the colt. They've seen them at this stage and in another uh, eight or nine months when you get to see them, they'll look even more impressive. And 
their page will grab you. Um, hopefully their presence has grabbed you today and I'm sure it will in another eight or nine months time. Well, a lot of people want to be grabbed by tall, dark strangers, so they might have been hypnotised right now. Thanks, guys. Um, but as I was alluding to, you see horses when they are young and you just look at them as young horses. And if, ever, if you're working around horses enough, and you've probably encountered this far more than I have, but, and to see where they progress to when they turn into elite uh, racing um, uh, horses. But uh, I was in New Zealand at Cambridge Stud once, group of mares, and I was pointed to this champion mare called Horlix in the paddock, who won the Japan Cup, um, one of New Zealand's best, and she had a folded foot. So I got a photo taken with, uh, you can imagine the folded foot's not going to leave mum. So I've got a, fo a photo with Horlix and her folded foot. Um, it wasn't until about five years later that it became obvious that the folded foot was a horse that turned out to be Brew, who I called winning the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, it's incredible how um, certain uh, horses or, or moments just um, they're sort of implanted in your memory and, you, and a lot of people here probably could tell a story very similarly to what you've just told about a, a young horse that they saw or something they saw galloping across a paddock and they had to ask what it was um, and then yeah, in, in a few years time or five or ten years time there's probably a, an even better story to tell about a champion race or yeah. something's on the end of it. And that could be emanating out of today, it's all possible. I think Santa Claus has come without the, the Santa Claus outfit, Sally. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> uh, got the ho, ho, ho right. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot more prizes to give away. Um, look, they might be within earshot, but to, to the team here today that have looked after the horses parading, you know, it's no mean feat in front of a big crowd to, uh, to be looking after powerful horses, particularly the stallions. So uh, I'm, I'm sure on behalf of the whole Lower Long team, uh, Kath, uh, her staff, the handlers of the horses, I think it's well worth putting your hands together on their professionalism of what they've been able to uh, provide for us here today and that goes to you too Grant how was your debut performance uh, in for lower long uh, today how would you um, rate it well I'm still standing don't listen to Paul um, whatever Paul says don't listen to <laughs> I've uh, that's been a trait my whole life Dan <laughs> usually uh, do the opposite Paul says something I do the opposite but, um, no it's been great it's uh, you know I was here last year with Paul um, on the other end of a camera and so it's a little bit of a different role for me but um, it's very enjoyable I'm still learning a lot of, um, I'm, I'm very interested to, to find a lot of the uh, background about some of these stallions and and their families and um, yeah it's very exciting yeah it certainly is and it's not difficult to get excited by the pedigrees or the quality of the the, the horses um, to see them live as well too often nowadays I think I was talking with uh, Kima before and uh, I think in this day uh, and age, people um, that we're relying on to invest their money, particularly through the, the gambling side of it, which is very important from uh, Harness Racing's uh, survival's point of view, but we're getting further and further away from the identification between uh, living, breathing creatures uh, and cardboard cutouts, you know, and, and the horses that we see go around at our harness tracks. They are full of blood, they've got their own brain um, and they live lives that um, people look after them as opposed to just watching those cartoon races. And then, you know, COVID probably didn't help that to a large degree. So to get out here and see them in the flesh, I think it's one of the finer aspects of being involved with horse racing or harness racing. Yeah, very, very true, Dan. You're right. Obviously, COVID changed a lot of things and... Um, obviously, last year's parade was uh, a reason for people to get out, and it's great to see another great turnout here tonight. I probably come from a slightly different uh, line. You know, you talk about obviously we need people to bet on racing and to fund racing, but um, I, I'd you know much rather mingle with these sorts of people who are prepared to put their money into breeding, knowing that um, it can be a very hard slog, but they're very passionate about their their animals and their progenies and producing either racehorses or yearlings to be sold and. Um, without those sorts of people, you know, this industry wouldn't survive. Um, punters seem to find something to bet on no matter what, but we need the passionate breeders to keep doing what they're doing and, and you know, people like Kath and, and that to keep doing what they're doing and um, let's hope that we come out a lot stronger at the other end. Well, we're going to put a few smiles on the faces of... Uh some people here with a number of the prizes that we've got to give away and there is a number of prizes we might be here for a little while actually but as I said if you walk away empty-handed here today you've only got yourself to blame you're just unlucky um, but being involved in horse racing they're part of the bumps that we ride aren't they so the uh, 
the next prize. Actually, you can read this out, Grant. What have we got first? It is the Invigorate Equine Massage, a voucher. Sponsored by Jay Court over in Echuca. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. Sponsored by Jay Court, who's based over in Echuca. He does both equine and human massages. So, Fantastic. Kill two birds with we'll the one a stone. Yep, hey? It's like the doggy massage. When I get them to come around, I take my shirt off, they look at my back and they, you know, it's like two for the price of one. <laughs> Cherie Baker. Congratulations, Cherie. Oh, there she is. There. I'll hold the Next up, we've uh, the very generous donation from Woodland Stud. We have the free service fee to lather up. So someone very lucky is about to... Uh, I'm going to free service fee to a up and coming stallion. Sorry, Sally, we took you out oh. of the. Uh, is it Owen Flynn? Oh yes. Good on you, Owen. He won the voucher to breed a champion called Soap on a Rope. You've just got a package donated by Better Vet. The next is a package donated by Better Vet, who are here today. If you want to have a look at any of their goods and get any information. Um, Pop over there and uh, they'll let you know all about it. Acadia Meadows. Um, yep. Yep, we've got a winner. Thank you, Sal and Kimberly and Grant. Next up, we've got another head stall and lead package. Thanks to Saddle World at Shepparton. Thank Saddle you to Saddle World, World at Shepparton. Yep, indeed. Sponsored the sprint oh, lane there as the well. Winner. Yours, I think. It wasn't mine. Jared Maloney. Yeah, Jared, you'll Can't get rid of him. <laughs> That'll help catch you really are. When aspiring Eve is a bit naughty to catch, we're going to leave that head stall and lead on, Jared. <laughs> you really are on a roll at the moment. How about you put a tassel on a ticket on for all of us here today? Because you seem to be uh, having a purple a patch of good luck at the moment. We've got another nice uh, equine light mask. Another equine light mask. Katrina, Katrina, I, sorry, I, I can't read it. It's either Jelly or Jelby. Sorry, my apologies, I just can't Katrina quite. Katrina Jelly, it looks like. Katrina Jelly, is that right? Yep. Here she comes. Your nickname, Aeroplane? <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. We've got another well, like Katrina Katrina. lead um, from Saddle World Shepparton. Come on, Sally. Have a pick, Sally. Oh, okay, my turn. Did oh, that come from your pocket? No. Graham Old. Graham Old. Couple of uh, mares here, Graham. So we uh, we might be able to uh, hang on to that. Yeah, the uh, owner and breeder of Lady Adelia. Um, he also has uh, Alder, Baron, Alder Baron Shelley here, who fell down just a couple of days ago. Um, Hopefully he liked what he saw in one or two of the trotting stands here this afternoon and we can uh, get his signature on a bit of paper before he leaves today. It's going to be hard not to. Um, congratulations, you have won. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nutri and Equine Lucky Door Prize won by free 2024 yearling sale nomination. So thanks to Nutrien. Now this person's already left. With Susan Hunter. Susan Hunter. I think she's gone, so it'll have to be a redraw. You could have not mentioned her name and then no one would know. Now everybody would see her next time and say, you won the $20,000 uh, first prize and you weren't there, so they re-raffled it. So we better get hands up. Should we re-raffle? Should we go again? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. We've You've got to be in attendance, yeah? I'm trying to unwrap this ticket. <laughs> Dallas McIntyre. Very good. What have we got next, Kimberly? We'll go with a uh, another head stall, courtesy of Drover's Saddlery. Have a pick, Kimberly. One 
Wayne Evans. Wayne Evans. Won the head stall from Drover Saddlery. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Good on you, Wayne. Um, it's like getting a different croup here, isn't it, at the blackjack table? I noticed you picked from the other end of the box that we're all... Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was much needed. Next, we've got a couple of feed dippers donated by Barristock. It's your turn, Dan. Oh, my turn. Okay. Barristock have also put feed samples in all the show bags today. Yeah, and Barristock have also been very generous to put feed samples in all the show bags that you've got here today. They're great sponsors and uh, always looking out for us. Darren Taylor. You're a winner, Darren. No matter what your friends say, you're a winner. That'll help feed the, uh, the progeny of Pastor Stephen that he won his free service fee at uh, the uh, Breed to Succeed, I believe. Is that right? Oh, well yeah. done. Next up, we've got another head stall and lead from um, Shepherd and Saddlery. Do you want me to do it, or do you so, feel lucky if Sally did it, or Kimberly? I mean, pref I'd prefer if they did it, but anyway, no one voiced their disapproval quickly enough. Catherine Jessup. Oh, sorry. Catherine. Jessup. God. Is there. And products from Rand Lab. So we've got a box of goodies here from Rand Lab, some uh, clothing and some products. So they come and do our gastroscope days. They, uh, they come and uh, look after the gastroscoping here on the gastroscope days at uh, Northern Rivers Equine. So this is like getting a quaddy or a trifecta or something like that because there are multiple prizes in yeah, one right, here. Yep, there's quite a bit in there. Oh, okay. Well, this is all right. Rod Caldwell. Hopefully you're still here. Yeah, there right is. there he is. <laughs> and then we'll do the real barrow, which is um, a combination of donations of... Oh, I think it's written on there. So the wheelbarrow is going. Makes sense, doesn't it, to carry all the prizes across, but there's multiple prizes within the wheelbarrow. No, no, it's all one. So GTS Tongala is one big prize. Yeah. Oh, one big prize. Yeah. Saddle World, Barristock and, and Hunters, uh, GTS Tongala as well, um, with uh, the wheelbarrow and WB Hunters at Chuka. So this, you can wheel it off. The only regret you might have, the prizes are fantastic, but if it was full of gold or something like that, but in your own mind, you can envisage it. You're a harness racing owner. I'm sure you've all vis envisaged winning a Group 1 Vic Bread in a few years' time to take the $100,000 away, and that's what you can take it away with. That makes sense, Kath, doesn't it? Okay, here's our winner, Grant. The winner is Ben Powell. Good on you, Ben. And you can literally, physically, wheel it away. Ah, uh, really good job. <laughs> the last draw for the day is the uh, free service fee to Yankee Rockstar donated by Lower Long Farms. You can draw that one, Dan. All righty. Yankee Rockstar, free service fee. You would have been a rock star back in your day. Wouldn't you? You're still a ro you're a rock star now. <laughs> I'm, I'm race caller. Turning crimson. Um, Ian Johnson. Ian's going to breed the next rock star. He's already bred a few. Um, hopefully there's another one there. Well done, Ian. Good on you. Well done to all of uh, all the winners of the prizes. As I said, if you didn't get a prize, that, well, you have. You've got all the show bags, the um, drinks, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, terrific food, uh, presentation. Um, Kath and the team here must have someone on their side because look at all the dark clouds around. We haven't had a spot of rain. And I don't know if there's even room for that sun to poke through, but it's been poking through most of the last half hour, Grant. So um, I'd like uh, you all to put your hands together for the whole team here, for Kath. Being a vet, she's cloned herself three times over. Surely no one could do this in real life. So well done, Kath and the team um, yeah, for putting on a fabulous show.